Hey guys, I'm the Burke and I do things. And in today's video, I am going to do, I think it's a tag, it's a challenge maybe, a tag challenge, whatever we wanna call it. I originally saw this on Lauren De La Ferra's channel and I know she's done it actually a couple times now. And I believe that this was started by Annette's Makeup Corner. I'll link their videos down below. But essentially, I went through my entire collection and picked out 10 eyeshadow palettes, if I could only keep 10. And I really considered keeping one of my colorful palettes because I was like, oh, I should have a colorful palette because I don't have a lot in my collection to begin with because I know how often I use them. So I have them there as kind of like my safety net. But I realized so many of my more neutral palettes do have like pops of color in them that I did try to cover like all my bases and pick out palettes that had like kind of like the full spectrum of the rainbow in them while also staying fairly neutral at the same time. So if you guys are interested in seeing the 10 palettes that I would keep if I could only keep 10, then keep on watching. Let's go. All right, I say let's start with my fully, what I would call like fully neutral, no pops. And in my mind, I have three of them. So the first neutral palette is the palette I'm wearing today. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. It's probably one of my all time favorite palettes. I used the heck out of this for sure. This is actually in my mini product project pan right now. And I don't know if you can really see like the usage of this, but this is a well loved palette right here. I actually just ordered from Ulta a e.l.f. palette that I feel like is going to potentially be a really good dupe for this. I do have that video planned to go up sometime within the week. So hopefully you guys will be seeing that in the future. If you haven't already, I don't know what order everything's going up in, but for $25, I love it. I've very, very much considered getting the new one from Natasha and Nona that just came out. I'm waiting until February to make a Sephora purchase. I'm trying to slow down my spending, make more conscious decisions when it comes to my spending. So if I still want it come February, I will be purchasing it, but this one, it's just so good. Okay, my next more neutral palette is more of the smoky neutral where I feel like that's more like daytime, like easy one and done kind of look. It's the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions palette. Unfortunately, I feel like this one is discontinued and I don't know why. <laughs> I really love the quality of this. I purchased this as an add-on from my Ipsy Glam Bag Plus, but the actual quality of these eyeshadows are so good. And like I said, it's the neutral that I love, but it also has the deeper tones. So it's more of the smoky nighttime, more glam neutral. And a combination of these two palettes is actually the eyeshadow I wound up wearing to Ipsy Creator Day. So that's how you know I love them because I was willing to wear these eyeshadows in front of people who are actually very good at doing their makeup. So I had faith that they would not let me down. Okay, the last fully neutral palette I would call it fully neutral, is the e.l.f. New Classics palette. This is my all-time favorite eyeshadow palette from the drugstore. This was $14 at Target. It's neutral, but I mean, it technically, it does have like the pop of gold and the little pink, but I really like the quality of this. It has a little bit more variety when it comes to shades than the last two, which is why I wanted this. And not only do I really like the way these perform, I find that these e.l.f. eyeshadows really have very good longevity when it comes to putting them on in the morning. Like my eyes still look the same at night, which is something that I don't typically get out of drugstore eyeshadows. Also, I find that they blend well together. Sometimes I find drugstore eyeshadows kind of blend together and you can't really like make a gradient, so to speak. But so this also has made my top 10. This next one I think is a neutral. Some people might not but I feel like it's like the pinky neutral, if we could call it that. And I decided to keep the Color Pop Sweet Talk palette. It, yes, it's not like a traditional neutral, but I feel like it's like a pretty neutral because of all the pinks and the sparklies. And whenever I use this, I have such a beautiful eye look. The Super Shock up here called Side to Side just like can completely transform it into this like beautiful glistening look. So this was another one that I had to choose, I felt like, because while it's not like a traditional brown neutral palette, I feel like this is also, in my opinion, a form of neutral palette. Just a little bit different than the other ones I had. Good job talking. Okay, the next palette is one of my neutral palettes at the pop, and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette. I'm very sad that this is discontinued. I did purchase this at TJ Maxx, 
but considering how I feel like so many people call this like their all-time favorite palette from Anastasia, I'm shocked, absolutely shocked that the brand has not used that as an, a reason to monetize on people's love and bring it back so people come running at them. Because I feel like they did that with the Amarisi highlighter. They made it limited edition and it was gone and people wanted it so bad. So they brought it back and everyone that wanted it went out and snagged it. And I feel like the exact same thing would happen with this palette and I'm shocked they haven't done it yet. But similar to the Huda Smoky Obsessions, it has a very similar color story, a little bit more color option. It also does have the pink pop right here, so a little pink. But the, the shimmers in this palette are kind of what make it for me. They're different than, like the formula is just so amazing. So I definitely had to keep this. It's the only Anastasia palette I own. And honestly, it's the only one that's ever really like drawn me in enough to purchase it. Even though I bought it on sale at TJ Maxx, like that's how you know I wanted it because I they always have Anastasia stuff there and it's like the only Anastasia thing I've ever bought there. So I'm very happy about it. Okay, so this next palette is probably going to be a surprise. It's an awesome neutral palette. I really like it. I don't reach for it often, but it also has those few pops of color that we could add into our collection if we only kept 10. That is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. So I think this is a very good palette. I like it a lot. I don't reach for it, again, because it is so large. It's just sometimes too much for me to choose from, but it does have not only a good variety of neutral mattes, but it also has decent shimmers and it has the pop of yellow, the purples, like the blue greens. This is, I guess, a blue, you know, it, it, it still has those pops that if I wanted to use them in my collection, I could, but I don't feel like I have to keep an entire palette just to have a pop of blue or a pop of purple. I would have the color in this palette and that's why this one's staying. Okay, so another neutral-ish kind of palette that I wanted to include that I absolutely love and also has a few pops in it is my absolute favorite palette from ColourPop. It's probably the, of all my eyeshadow palettes, it's the one that I'm closest to hitting pan on. That is the ColourPop Dream Street palette. So similar, it is very neutral tone, but it also has like the red, the more tealy colors, but actually, I don't know if the light's gonna pick up, but this brown here is, so, has such a divot in it. I'm shocked I haven't hit pan on this shade yet. This one up here also has a pretty decent dip in it. But again, this is one of those palettes where every time I use it, I love the way my eye look turns out and we have extra pops of color. If I'm ever feeling a little funky, doesn't happen often, but this one I felt like had to absolutely be in my top 10. My next palette is one that I love and has my favorite kind of shimmer formula, I guess you could say. And that is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. This is probably one of my most used palettes I own. I love that it has just the simple format colors and then all the rest are shimmer. I have worn this to countless weddings because the actual formula lasts really well and I can kind of customize the pop of color I want. And again, we do have the pops here. We have purple, we have pink, we have green, we have the gold. So still would have those options in my collection. And the quality of this palette is so fantastic that I would definitely, definitely have to keep it. Some of my favorite colorful shadow swear are yellows and oranges. So I felt like this was like a colorful palette I could choose because it's definitely one that is in my comfort zone and I consider like my adventurous shades and that's the Huda Beauty Coral Obsessions palette. This kind of has that warm, orangey, yellowish, kind of terracotta-y shades in it. Really love the quality of these. I, again, wore this eyeshadow palette once to a wedding. My favorite shade is this guy down here. If you haven't seen my swatching my favorite shade from every palette or something video I made, this one just had to come with me. Could not leave this guy behind. All right, one last palette. Again, I felt like I had to be true to my yellow and orange loving self. And I went with the Alomar Cosmetics Volume 1 palette because not only does it have these shades, it also has these two shades up here, which are some of the most unique shades in my collection. Again, we also have extra pops of blue in my collection then. We have this row here. So this is the final palette I went with. So yeah. Those were my top 10 eyeshadow palettes I would keep if I had to get rid of everything else. Let me know what you think about what I chose. Would you choose the same? Would you choose different? I mean, we're all different. I assume you would choose different, but it was fun to do. 
Let me know if there's any other kind of video like this you'd like to see me do. Drop it in the comments. And as usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Twitter and my Instagram down below. Give them a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.